Brakatea Hawa, Brakatea Hawa Shai, Brakatea Hawa, Brakatea Hawa Shai, Brakatea Hawa, Brakatea Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Our Lord and our Savior. The Thamashina Kabbalah is a Kormi Shah Sharala, get double honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom, Wahabla, Baki, Yarsha, Yasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson. Baharachah Hadashah, Maf, and the Holy Spirit of Truth. <clears throat> and um, the topic of this video was going in on how the Lord is our uh, our strong tower. He is our defense. In the book of uh, Proverbs, the 18th chapter, the 10th verse, it says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Uh, the, the righteous runneth into it, and it's safe. Roughly paraphrasing. Matter of fact, I'm going to just read it verbatim. Let's read that verbatim and start off with that. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 18. And verse 10, it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So the righteous, all right, is going to call upon the name of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai and be safe from any and every calamity that we may come across, that we may face. Uh, that, that we may face and which we're going to face a lot of calamities. We're going to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. The scriptures say, uh, Paul in the book of Acts, he said, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom. That's the life of a righteous, of a righteous man, of a righteous being. They go through a lot of things for what? To show our fidelity, to show our faith. All right. Uh, uh, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. That's in the book of Psalms. King David said, I have been young. Or, uh, I, I have been young. I have been old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. So, yes, we're going to go through a lot of different things, but the Lord is not going to forsake us. In the book of Sirach, the second chapter, well, he said, I'm with you all the way into the end of the world. Right. And Sirach, the second chapter says, look at the generations of old. Has ever any trusted in the Lord and was confounded? Has ever... Uh, any the abided in the fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and was forsaken? Has ever any called upon his name and was despised? It's never happened. So as long as we continue to walk in the fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, he's not going to forsake us. As long as we continue to trust in him, right? He's not he's not going to confound us. And as long as we continue to call upon his name in truth and in sincerity, he's going to answer our prayers and he's going to uh, uh uh and he's going to be with us through any and everything. <clears throat> This is the book of Psalms, and I just want to go through a couple precepts in the, in the Psalms. This is Psalms chapter 7 and 10. My defense is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, which saveth the upright in heart. So we got to be, we can't just call on the Lord and think everything's going to be straight. We got to be upright in our mind. We got to be upright in our spirit. Okay, he said that he delivered the righteous, so we got to be moving righteously. First and foremost, it starts with faith, and through our faith, we should be moving a certain way. We should have actions to show forth our faith. King David said, I believe, therefore have I spoken. All right, so he had faith, he had belief, therefore he what? He went and had works to back up that faith and that belief. It says in the book of 2nd Edges, the ninth chapter, it says that the ones that shall be saved shall be saved uh, by their faith and by their works, whereby they have believed. So the two go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. As James said, faith without works is dead. You truly believe in the, in the Bible and you want to get into the kingdom? Well, you should be moving like that. All right? It says, seeing that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy and godly conversation? All right? So seeing that this place is about to be destroyed and the Lord is about to set up a new heaven and a new earth where in dwelleth righteousness, we should be moving holy. We should be moving godly. How do we move holy? By following the Holy Bible. How do we move godly? By following and being obedient to the words of God. His real name being Yahweh and the name was only begotten son being Yahweh Shai. This is Psalms chapter 31 and verse 2. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of my defense to save me. The Lord is our defense. In the day of trouble, we're going to call upon Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right? And, and, and we don't need anything else. All right? Uh, let's get a couple more. This is Psalms 59 and 9. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee. All right, he, the Lord is all powerful, omnipotent. He's in control over everything. That's who, that's who I'm going to trust in, right? That's who I'm going to be loyal to. That's who I'm going to have faith in. That's who I'm going to call upon. The one that has everything under his control, all right? The whole world in his hands that, that has strength and power over everything that you see and everything that you don't see. That's who I'm going to serve. That's who I'm going to put my trust in. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee for 
for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is my defense. <coughs> Salakia. This is Psalms 59 and 16. But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is my de defense and the power of my mercy. Okay? So the Lord, we're serving Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, hoping to be given forgiveness, hoping to be, be shown mercy. All right, and the Lord is going to be our defense. He's going to be our shield and our buckler, our rock. And if the Most High be for us, who can be against us? <clears throat> Psalm 62 and 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Okay, so can't nothing move us. All right, why? Because we're founded upon a rock. All right, that's in the book of Matthew. It says, I will liken this man. As a wise man who hears the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and does them and applies them. Right? He shall be likened unto a man that built his house upon a rock. When the floods come and the winds beat upon that house, that, that house is not going to fall. Okay? Why? Because it's founded upon a rock. Okay? Just like King David. That all this is mainly Psalms of David. Right? I read one more. Psalms 94 and 22. But the Lord is my defense and my power is the rock of my refuge. Alright, so, oh, there's another one. That word refuge keeps coming up. There's another one in Proverbs. This is Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 26. <clears throat> in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Going into Jacob's trouble, we want to have strong confidence. Going into when all hell breaks out loose, we want to have strong confidence in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai that He is our rock, that He's going to defend us, that He is with us. So, what do we need to do? We need to continue to walk in the fear of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. All right, we need to continue to and pray that the Lord allow us to uh, uh allow Him to increase, uh, uh, give us a healthy, a healthier fear of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, and give us more faith and a stronger spirit, and bring us closer and uh, and allow us to draw nigh unto Him. So that we can have that strong confidence. It says in the fear of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Okay. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Noah's family was saved off of the works that he did. Off of the faith that he had. Off of the fear that he moved in. And off of the works that came with those two things. Alright. So we that, that same story applies to us if we're moving the same way. Let's get that real quick. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And a man, I, I believe it was the centurion, he was like uh, he was like the security, the jail keeper. He asked Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe and you and your house will be saved. Okay, so off the, of, off of the belief of that man, okay, which like we've been, faith, uh, they shall be saved by their faith and works whereby they have believed. So off of that belief and the faith and the works, all right, that come with that belief, <clears throat> A uh, 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 salvation can come not only to him, but also his household. Okay, so this is the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of Yahweh of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. So because of his faith and his fear, he moved, he had action, he had works to building an ark to the saving of his house. It's the same thing that we're doing right now. We were warned of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, through the men that he has set up on the highways and byways. Our eyes seen our teachers, and they say, hey, this place is about to blow up. Before this place blows up, it's going to, uh, uh, martial law is going to be implemented. The economy is going to uh, go down. The dollar is not going to have any value. Uh, uh, they're going to implement the Karagma. Okay, there's going to be different plagues and famines and pestilence that's going to come to this place. We were warned of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai through his men, through his prophets, being the apostles, being the elders, the men that's been teaching for decades. All right. And through that warning from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, through the men that he has established, we move with fear. So we started building that ark spiritually. Okay. And we still, and, and there's still work that needs to be done. If we're still, if we're still able to post these videos, if we're still able to go out on the highways and byways, then there's still work that needs to be done on our ark. Okay, so that's our main focus uh, 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 in these times that we're living in right now. 
going into 2022, our main focus is finishing this arc. All right, finishing our course with honor, with faith. Okay, so let's go from there. Let's see what order I, I got a couple uh, accounts I want to go into. I just want to see which order I want to start off in. Let's start off with this Judith 5. It's a lot. All right, this is Judith chapter 5. I'll read this. This is Judith. I'm going to start at verse. Um, Salakia. Baba Koshab, bear with me. I just had Judith 5. I'm, obviously, I'm not about to read the whole chapter. <clears throat> but, um, let me start in the 6th chapter. This is Judith chapter 6. In verse 1, it says. And when the tumult of men that were about the council was ceased, Telophrenus, the chief captain of the army of Ashur, said unto Achor, and all the Moabites before all the company of the other nations, and who art thou, Achor? So when you read it in its, in, in its totality, the previous chapter, Achor was telling uh, Holofernes, like, hey, you don't want to fuck with the, you don't want to fuck with the Israelites. Why? Because they're on one accord with their power. They're on one accord with their God. And because they're on one accord with their God, you can't do nothing against them. He is going to defend them. All right. He is going to take care of them. <clears throat> let, let me jump back. This is Judah chapter five and 19. But now are they returned to their power and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, and if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their power, let us consider that that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and they shall be, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, and through Yahweh Shai, there's no iniquity in the elect, right? It says, because why he went and uh, uh, died and, and was risen again for our sins. Okay? It says, but if there be no iniquity in their nation, it says, blessed is that man whose sins is not imputed onto him. All right? And his transgression is not mentioned, roughly paraphrasing. <clears throat> But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their power before them. And we become a reproach before all the world. And that's what's about to take place, man. These armies, these troops, this devil, all right, and his agenda, trying to come after us, trying to come after the servants of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, the remnant that's returned, the remnant of his saints that return to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, that's serving him in truth and in sincerity, that's casting off this mortal world, that's fighting this wicked ass flesh and these evil ass demons and spirits that's out here. You trying to come with us, the Lord is going to raise up, you, you trying to come and get us, the Lord is going to raise up a standard for us. And he's going to defend us as that scripture just said. All right. We're praying to him daily, man. We're praying to him daily uh, 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 in the morning uh, uh, to the nighttime. We're always constantly praying to Yahweh Barsham, Yahweh Shai. We're connected back to our power. Ain't nothing you can do against us to stop us. We're in the time of Israel rising and never falling. We're in the time of your fall and our rise, your end and our beginning. You're finishing our start. It's over with for you, devil. There's nothing you can do to hold on to this vile ass, weak ass society. All right, you took you you took everything and you flipped it upside down and turned it backwards and fucked it up. Everything that you touched since you came into rulership, you fucked everything up. All right, there's nothing left for you to do but to get your ass whooped on this side and to go into slavery on the other side, on the next side, in our world. And after that, after we use you for what we're going to use you for, we're going to get rid of your ugly ass, man. He shall perish forever like his own dung. Know ye not this of all, that the triumphing of the wicked is short and but for a moment. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Lest their Lord defend them and their power be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. And that's what's about to happen to Esau. Starting with Esau, Edom, and the rest of you damn nations. The rest of you damn heathens. Going to be reproached before the whole world. The Lord, the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai alone in that day shall be exalted. All right, so that's pretty much it on that. 
Yep, that's it on that. I'll finish right there. So let's go from there to the book of Maccabees. Second Maccabees chapter. This is Second Maccabees chapter 3 and verse. Um, let me see. I start at verse. This is Second uh, Maccabees chapter three, and verse thirty-six. Then testify he to all men the works of the great power, which he had seen with his eyes. Now this is going into Heliodorus. Heliodorus was sent by the king to take away uh, money, to take away extra money, really to go and rob and to steal. Out of our treasury, out of the uh, treasury of the Israelites, which was r unlawful and uh, uh, unrighteous. Okay, they was already getting their tribute money. That was already theirs. Then you had some weak ass, bitch ass nigga. All right, went and said, yeah, Israel got more money that you can take, that you can have. Some, it was a coon ass, bitch ass nigga. All right, who's probably on this earth today being a coon ass, bitch ass nigga. Okay, but nonetheless, he goes into the heathens and said, because he wants to be the high priest, because he's a bitch-ass, coon-ass nigga. He wants to be the high priest, so he sells out the whole nation. He sells out the whole nation. He goes to the uh, to the heathens and say, yeah, there's there's some there's some treasures in Jerusalem. So the king sends this guy Heliodorus and a couple of his other goons, right? Sends Heliodorus to come and take this uh, take this money that this man was speaking of out of the treasury. And what happened? The people of Israel, starting with the high priest which I believe was Onias, was praying to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai that he bring deliverance and that he defend us and that he protect this 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 treasury which was for uh, the good of our nation. All right, so <clears throat> that's just the background. If you don't know it, you're supposed to read it. It shouldn't have to be said. All right, it shouldn't have to be said that, yeah, you should go read this if you don't know it. No, if you're hearing something that you don't know about, a brothers, brothers is talking about it, then it's up to you to tell yourself, I need to read that. Put it in your notes. Okay, when uh, next time you sitting around doing nothing, being idle, go and read that chapter, and then it'll compel you to read the whole book if, if you haven't, you know, gone over the Maccabees. All right, but it's just being proactive and not reactive. All right, getting ahead of our, get, getting ahead uh, uh, of the game. All right, and not being like a horse or a mule to need a bit or bridle uh, or bridle to be led. All right, uh, uh, shouldn't have to be micromanaged in this truth. We should all take this is uh, our salvation that's on the line. So we need to be self-motivated. You hear brothers talking about an account and a, uh, and you probably read the whole role. But if you if you're not if you're not familiar with it, you gotta go back into it. It's that simple. Right, you gotta be hungry. We gotta be hungry for this word. We gotta be thirsty for this truth. We gotta be addicted with learning, addicted with growing, addicted with increasing in knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Why? Because that's what's gonna keep us stable in these last days. All right, addicted to serving Yahweh by Shem Yahweh It's not for man. We don't go out on the highways and byways for no man. To please some for some for the eyes of some man. We don't do these lessons for the eyes of some man. Just to please some man. It's first and foremost for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and then for the elect. Alright, it says I have not uh, uh seek wisdom for myself only, but also them the, the others that seek knowledge. Roughly paraphrased. And Paul said, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Alright, all the way to Yahweh Shah, he went and laid his life down for us. So we have to do the same thing for him and for our brother and for our brothers, man. <clears throat> Anyways, this is the book of Second Maccabees, chapter three. And verse 37, and when the king asked Heliodorus, and when the king asked Heliodorus, who might be a fit man to be sent yet once again to Jerusalem? He said, so uh, the king's like, fuck, I still need that money. I still want that bread. Heliodorus, who you think I should send? He's, and this is his reply. It says, if thou has any enemy or traitor, send him thither. He says, shit, send your worst enemy. All right. Or a traitor, someone that you need to punish. That's who you should send. Why? And thou shalt receive him well scorched if he escape with his life. Because we're connected at this time. We are pleasing Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. See, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. I Meaning, can't nobody fuck with us. So, as long as so we need to focus on pleasing Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, we need to focus on pleasing Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, first and foremost, in spirit and in, in thought. Okay? In thought and heart. In words and actions. All right, and everything that we do, focus on pleasing him because if we're pleasing him, he's going to do for us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to defend us. He's going to protect us. He's going to save us. All right, from who the fuck ever. All right, it says, um, if he escaped with his life. So they're going to start trying to send troops to come and fuck with us. And they, 
they probably they might not escape with their life. In this instance, the Lord uh, sent angels to protect Israel and to protect that treasury. All right, and there's gonna be ain't there's angels. It says the angel of the Lord and kept around them that fear him. All right, it says the angel Psalms ninety one. That he has given uh, ain't the angels charge over us to keep us in our ways. Roughly paraphrasing that word keep is to guard. The Hebrew word shamar. Guard, protect, watch. All right. Defend. It says, for in that place, no doubt, no doubt, we cannot doubt. There is an a special power of Yahweh. This is a heathen. This is Heliodorus. He just got his ass whooped. So, of course, he's going to believe. He's seen the two angels. The, actually, there's three angels. Come and whoop his ass, beat his ass to death. Then they prayed and he was like resurrected. He was brought back to life. His, his body was uh, rejuvenated, right? He's seen it, but he had that belief. He said, no doubt that there's a special power of Yahweh that defendeth, that defendeth us. This is a heathen. Same with in the book of Daniel, the sixth chapter. When, Daniel's, when Daniel was being persecuted for praying... <clears throat> he was thrown into the lion's den. This is what the heathen king said unto him. The heathen king being Darius, right? This is Daniel chapter 6 and verse 16. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy power, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. This is a heathen. This is the faith that a heathen has with our God, with our power. How much more of the faith that we should have? Okay? He said, Thy power whom thou servest continually, he will deliver. There's no doubt in that, in that, in that statement. Alright? This, this is the same mentality and the same spirit that we got to come in times too. Because again, this is a heathen. Alright? So if the heathen was saying that to Daniel, how much more faith did Daniel have? Alright? Again, this is what we got to be praying for. There's a man in the uh, in the New Testament. I think he was asking his son to be healed, something along those lines. But nonetheless, he said, I believe, but Lord, help my unbelief. So he had faith, but he's telling the Lord to increase his faith. And if there's any doubt in him, all right, to get that out of him. He had faith, he had belief, but he's asking the Lord to increase his faith. All right, and to get rid of any any percentage of doubt that 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 may be that may be within him. It's the same thing that we got to pray for. Same thing we got to ask for. All right, faith comes. Faith is a gift from heaven. So in order to get more of it, that's we got to be uh, uh, asking uh, uh, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai in heaven and doing what's pleasing to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, which sits on the throne in heaven. Okay, so that he can increase our faith. So let's read that again in the Book of Maccabees, the Second Maccabees, chapter three. And verse 38, if thou hast any enemy or traitor, send him thither, and thou shalt receive him well scourged if he escape with his life. For in that place, for uh, in the midst of Jerusalem, right, which Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So amongst us in these camps, all right, in these camps, starting with the apostles and the elders, the men of great millstone, the men that's teaching the truth amongst us, right, no doubt there is an a special power of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. There's a special power that's defending us, that's with us, always unto the end of the world. And the things concerning Heliodorus and the keeping of the treasury fell out on this sort. Okay, so that uh oh Salakia, Salakia, I'm I skipped verse 39. Verse 39 is uh let me read that. It says, For he that dwelleth in heaven. Hath his eye on his place. The scriptures say that his eye is always on the truth. His eye is always upon them that fear him. So his eye is always on us. His chosen. All right. I don't want to write the we are of that number. His servants. His sons. Right. For he that dwelleth in heaven hath his eye on that place. He hath his eye on us. How do we know that? It says to this man in the book of Isaiah 66. To, sit, to this man will I look. Him that is poor. Meaning lowly, meek, humble, of a contrite heart, all right, broken in spirit because of our sins and a penitent mentality, right, and trembleth at my word. To this man will I look, so his eyes upon us. You go into that word, look, it's the Hebrew word nabat, which means to regard with care. The Lord looks at us and he has care for us. So when he sees that we don't got no food in our, uh, 
in our refrigerator, he's going to give us food. Whether it's from the heavens, whether it's from an angel, whether it's from teleporting a brother that has food and bringing it to us so that we can eat with that brother. These are all different things that's happened before that the Lord has done to men that he cared for. To men that were serving him in truth and in sincerity. And we're going to see those same things times 10 happen in these days that we're living in right now. For he that dwelleth in heaven hath his eye on that place and defendeth it. And he beateth and destroyeth them that come to hurt it. All right, so come and, come and try to hurt us. Go ahead. Come and try to hurt us. Because you're going to get beat the fuck down. All right. And Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is going to defend us. When I say you're going to get beat the fuck down, I mean a celestial beat down. Just like Heliodorus. That was Heliodorus that was saying that. That was the heathen that was saying that. All right. Let, letting you know that, hey, the power of heaven is defending them. The power of heaven is with them. Just like Acor was saying, I wouldn't fuck with them. Alright, because they're pleasing the Lord, and because they're pleasing the Lord, he not going to let nobody fuck with them. He not going to let nobody touch them. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. So having that said, Lord willing, that was edifying, uplifting, and exhorting. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rakaq, Parash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, Rakaq, Parash. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks through us that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. The Thamashnaka Bailas of Kwame Shah Sharala get double honest to the elders of Israel being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom Wahabla Baki or Shah Yasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom Akim brothers keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draw off nine redemptions there than we believe. Shalom.